You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We're now going to be joined on the telephone with Chief Inspector Tony uh, Henley. Um, Firstly, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to speak to us. Thank you, Daniel. It's uh, good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's good to speak to you uh, again as well. I was hoping, um, first of all, we spoke to you before, if you could just give our listeners a little bit of an introduction into uh, your role. Oh, a little introduction. That could take some time. Um, yes, I am the district commander for Swale. Uh, my, my privilege to be the district commander. I've been here since 2008, uh, so I've been here quite a long time. And my role really is now I'm responsible for providing local policing for the whole of the district of Swale. Well, uh, we've caught up with you today to talk um, all about, I think, how there's a sort of a new policing uh, model. So I was hoping you could give our listeners a, a, an introduction into that and then perhaps we can talk a little bit more about it in depth as, as we go on. Yes, certainly, Daniel. I, I mean, we, um, everybody, I'm sure, is aware that... Uh, us as the police and as with all other public services have been um, having to deal with some quite challenging financial uh, issues over the last three or four years. Uh, and as a result of that, I think it's incumbent upon us and all our public sector um, colleagues to be looking at exactly how we do our work and how we can be most effective dealing with the issues that we've got to deal with, with the resources that we've got available to us. Um, as a result of that, the, the, Mr. Pusley, the, the current chief constable who started um, some six months ago, has conducted a review of our local policing services, and by that I mean the the, the, the 999 cars and the, the the day-to-day policing of Swale. He's done he's done a, a complete review of how we do that, uh, and has slightly changed the model uh, of service, and 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 in effect, what he's he's managed to reduce. Uh, some uh, costs by taking out some um, higher tier management, to reducing the management structure, thereby ensuring that the front line remains untouched, which I think is probably what we all realise is to be the best way to go. Um, as a result of that, as the district chief inspector, I've now um, inherited or uh, a whole number of other teams that come under my umbrella uh, and, and we've formulated a number of teams that will now uh, cover policing in Swale. I mean, our, our, the, what we have basically, we will now have local district policing teams uh, and they will be your, or what your listeners will recognise as the, the, the three nines cars that answer calls to assistance. Uh, I have those under my command now, which I didn't have previously. Uh, and that I think will be a great advantage and for the, the, the listeners on, on, on the island the, what, what it gives me is a great deal more flexibility uh, for the way I, I set up the operation in relation to Swale. I think probably one of the most consistent um, concerns raised to me through um, the, uh, my mailbox is through my, 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 the mail from, from residents is the, the levels of policing on, on the island. Well I'm I'm able to, under this model to actually tweak my the, the shift patterns to ensure that I get a much better and much more consistent policing presence on the island from my emergency response vehicles, which I think is really good news. And that's because as a district commander, I understand the vagaries and the, and the challenges of the of the island and the, the road networks in Laysdown and Warden, which are sometimes very difficult to get get to in in a hurry. So, we we've managed to do some work to 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 to, to do that to improve that. Um, underneath the local or working alongside the local policing teams, we've we've managed to create um, something called the community policing team. Now, this is a sergeant and a number of constables who will work uh, as a dedicated team to deal with the more Intracted uh, policing problems such as antisocial behaviour, particularly issues within communities. Um, they include having uh, a town centre officer in each of the three towns, as well as somebody who will be working specifically towards um, uh, domestic abuse and, and working with our partners in domestic abuse. 
Because that, they, they are particular antisocial behaviour is something I know people are very sensitive about. Uh, and we have now got a resource that will actually tackle that far more effectively. Um, for example, their their summer work will be on the island uh, because I'm aware of the of the 30,000 extra visitors the island attracts over the summer. Hopefully, if the weather holds good, yep. uh, and and all the the, the the policing pressure that does bring from on occasions, well, we've got a, a team that is out there dedicated to, to dealing with that now. So you can see that it, the, the, the local flexibility and responsiveness to the issues I have to face in Swale are far better serviced. I know you also wanted to talk a little bit about how you're partnering with the local authorities and the amicus arising. Yes, indeed. I, I, I mean, I think if you listen to most... Um, broadcasts from public sector workers these days we talk about this thing called partnership and i sometimes wonder whether you know the local the, the, the local residents actually understand what that means in swale we are very fortunate to actually have a very long history of effective working with partners um and, and particularly for us around antisocial behavior one of the best ways of coping with antisocial behavior is actually by using uh civil law and the housing housing law um, and, we, and that's a proven, proven approach which works. Now we we work out of a thing called the community safety unit, which is a uh, uh, an office in the local authority. So we work with housing officers from Amicus Horizon, uh, which is the local the majority holder in local housing uh, supplier. We also work with the noise and nuisance team from from the Swale Borough Council uh, and their warden team. And we have a team uh, of officers that, that look specifically at antisocial behaviour, uh, licensing issues, and they also now control the PCSOs, uh, our police community support officers. And our police community support officers will be working closely with our housing officers or with the, with the housing officers from, from America's Horizon and closely with the wardens so that we can provide a genuinely joined up approach to the problems that are facing communities. We need, I think, in this day and age, where resources are scarce, and you know, I think it would be uh, wrong of me to, to to not to mention that. But you know, resources are reducing, but I think we have to be more efficient. So if if uh, uh, somebody has a particular problem with noise, then it need, then it's incumbent upon us to work with the council to actually deal with that situation, because the council, in this case, are the people with the powers to deal with it, as with antisocial behaviour in, in in certain housing estates. You know, it's it's that joined up approach, which actually brings res- resolution to to the to to the to the people who are suffering the the behaviour. Was there anything else you'd like to uh, to cover? Well, no. I mean, my, my only point, and I know where it has been in in the local paper. Certainly, um, uh, some of the parish councils have been raising concerns about the fact that they believe that policing has been withdrawn from the island. Um, this is a this is a, this is not the case at all. I, hopefully, my explanation has, has reassured people about that. However, I think where the mis- misconception has come is the fact that because we work so closely with our partners, we um, six months ago we brigaded uh, all our police constables into Sittingbourne Police Station to work in a what we term an operational hub, and from there they go out to the to the calls and to where the demand is across the the, the, the district. We've now, I've now taken a step of actually pulling, of doing the same thing with the PCSOs. The PCSOs will all, for the whole div- district, will be reporting for duty from Sittingbourne, but they will still be going out uh, to their beats. Each uh, ward in 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 the in the district has um, a PCSO that is uh, uh, dedicated to that to that um, ward. Um, it is just that we have uh, they are all under the now the command of the CSU, so we can we can coordinate better and and provide a much more I think effective response to the to the problems that are facing some residents in some parts of the swale, and I think that's that's how it should be, um, and I just wanted to make that clear that there, there is absolutely no plans to withdraw any policing services from 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 the island in terms of of our effectiveness. Well, if you're happy, we've uh, we've covered everything. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to speak to our uh, listeners. Thank you very much, Daniel, and um, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.